Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Jeanette Escalera, and I am joined by Ricky Rendon, my counterpart. And back in September, we started hosting these webinar live series on Facebook um, to provide you with to provide you with um, information and resources from several of our community partners. So today we are kicking off the new year with um, the Disability Chamber of Commerce RGV. We have Ms. Evelyn Cano, who is the president of DCC RGV, and we have Ms. Esmeralda Leal, um, board member for the DCC RGV. So thank you very much for joining us, ladies, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Thank you for the invitation. So uh, once again, thank you. Happy New Year. Uh, and we're so excited to continue um, navigating this virtual world right that we're living in at the moment and continue to strategizing solutions to diversify the workplace the workforce here and locally and i know that's one of the strongest missions you have uh, for the dcc so before we dive in into what you're doing and what your goals are we want to learn a little bit more about who you are you know we know you're champions in uh, advocacy and inclusion here in the valley so why don't you Tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into this, this work that you're doing. Absolutely. We would love to tell you a little bit more about the Disability Chamber Commerce RGV. It's a fairly new chamber. It's a regional chamber here in South Texas. And it really is pretty unique and one of a kind uh, for those who are not familiar with the Chamber of Commerce. Typically, uh, Chambers of Commerce are associated with cities and um, uh, local entities and governments. Uh, but in our case, we saw the need to make a chamber of commerce that was specifically for the cross disability community. It's the fourth uh, disability chamber of commerce in the United States. And so it's definitely a new concept. And um, it started out of the need of wanting to assist employers, individuals with disabilities in our community with more information, more awareness, and more um, data on how we could assist them with the employment sector. Right, we want employers to see the value in hiring qualified individuals with disabilities. And um, <clears throat> we, we really started the conversation back in 2018, yes. 2019. Uh, we were three co-founders, actually parents of individuals, of uh, uh, loved ones on the spectrum. And uh, we just, we, we've been working together actually with other nonprofits prior to, uh, you know, founding the uh, Disability Chamber of Commerce. Um, we did see the need. Um, yes. But I think more than anything, the need in, in educating our uh, business community. Uh, there were amazing nonprofits right now. Uh, resources, agencies. And resources and agencies that help the individual with the disability. Not many, uh, as, not as many resources for the employer to help the employer feel comfortable or to educate them uh, on how to uh, how, how to retain or how to hire, how to train or how to even look for them. Right. And so, yeah, the notion came out of three mothers. Um, we were pretty involved in the community, but we noticed that there was a lot of resources for the younger um, aged uh, group. So up to 18, 21. And so what we decided was, it, let's start to look into ideas of how we could better assist the 21 to 70 year olds with right. disabilities in our community. And so this chamber not only will be helping the employers feel comfortable, but we also plan on assisting people with disabilities also feel comfortable with opening their own businesses one day and becoming entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. And so there will be a lot of programming for them as well. So we were founded in December of 2019. We have a founding board and three co-founders. Um, it's been a wonderful journey thus far. We were hit with founding a, officially it's a 501c3. We were founding um, this particular organization in a year of pivoting with this pandemic. Right. And so it was definitely, you know, interesting to start at that point. But nonetheless, we were able to do quite a few amazing things in the year 2020. It started off with uh, corporate training and sensitivity trainings for um, employers. 
And so we did start that part of the programming and we're still in an educational um, phase. Mm -hmm. We wanted the Chamber of Commerce to first start with educating the community and the employers. Eventually there will be memberships for small businesses, large businesses, organizations individuals. and individuals with disabilities. So in, 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 in um, retrospect, we, we look back and we think, well, why? Why did we need this? We were speaking to people who were inspired. Oh, you know, I, I'm inspired by this person with a disability and I would love to start, you know, hiring people with disabilities, but I don't know how. Right. There was the how, the what ifs, the maybe fears of potential liability. And so we started to listen to these employers who wanted to, but didn't know how to. Well, in partnering up with you all, mm -hmm. I'll be very honest with you, yes. this has been a blessing partnering right. up with Texas Workforce uh, Solutions, Texas Workforce Commission's uh, vocational rehabilitation. We work hand in hand with Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Vera and uh, in training uh, in the employers yes. and their staff um, and, and it's and it's and it's pretty. Uh, it's it's a training, not necessarily to show you what you do not know, because what you don't know, you don't know, obviously, right? right? But it's just to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you as a uh, employee, as a fellow uh, uh, colleague of somebody with some type of disability, just to make you feel uh, comfortable in dealing with the person yeah. as a person with who needs accommodations obviously and just see them as just another employee right. and so partnering up with you all has been uh, really really instrumental Absolutely. in helping us get that message across uh, and uh, I, I couldn't ask for more uh, better uh, partners actually <laughs> yes it's been awesome to help with the sensitivity trainings and we started with like you said education and training for the employers that was the number one goal this last year and still going into this year right. it's still part of the goal um, as a chamber of commerce we don't we will have memberships and those memberships, what will they encompass? So we hope to have networking events for employers who are already hiring people with disabilities or want to hire them so they feel comfortable. We hope to have um, events also for adults with disabilities who know that they haven't connected with each other. They can learn from each other and we would like to provide programming for them as well. And so that is all upcoming as memberships eventually open. At this very moment, it's still educational, most of the programming. Right. You know, and you know, uh, there's so much to comment about the work that you're doing. And there's a lot of key things that you mentioned that are just um, amazing, right? Like this is, knowing that this is one of the fourth you know chambers with this focus and that we have it here in the rio grande valley is, is amazing right uh such a needed uh focus and that passion for um connecting and that having that collective impact where you're bringing together different uh agencies to leverage the resources right and create a, a larger impact and um diversifying the different perspectives because the dis disability community is so broad, right? It, it encompasses so many different uh, conditions and, um, and barriers, right? So us that we know uh, and that we work with people with disabilities, we know their potential, we know their abilities and we know they're capable, right? And you, you mentioned that some of the challenges, right? Are not necessarily that, but the misconceptions and the I don't know how to approach this or how to move forward with become with creating an inclusive workforce right and that is where the stage that we're addressing right with this in, in this chamber and with our collaboration right we're able to magnify that and, and enhance that process so um, I, I know that you have a great board, right? And what, tell us a little bit about how you move forward with creating such a comprehensive team of people. One of the things that Evelyn always says is, we will not do anything for a person with a disability without people with disability. People with disability. We have to start to change that conversation. Um, even as parents, as experts, as um, advocates of people with disabilities, we may have a, a, a small inclination as to what their challenges are, but we still don't walk their walk. And so 
through some of my personal experiences of serving on some other state committees and just working side by side with adults who have disabilities, I started to realize a common denominator. All of them kept saying, why are we not being included in the conversations? Why are they planning programming and groups and things for us without us? And so one of the key things to our cross disability chamber of commerce here was we want to make sure that they were included in the conversation. So it started with our board. And mm -hmm. so we are very blessed to have um, two professors from the University of UTRGV on our mm -hmm. board. Uh, one of them happens to have a uh, disability herself. And the other one is in the speech and hearing department with a lot of expertise also mm -hmm. in, for people with disabilities. And so um, it started there. We have a board member who is serving um, not from the Rugana Valley out of North Texas, and he too has a disability and that's been very instrumental as he um, has different experiences from outside of the Rio Grande Valley that have been very helpful for us because we are big believers also of not reinventing the wheel. If someone in another area is doing a fantastic thing, we should definitely <clears throat> ask them how and to be more effective, it just cuts down the work for us as a new chamber. And so it started there. We also have some subcommittees. We have a great advisory committee composed of amazing individuals from the Rio Grande Valley. And we also to highlight have some Disability Chamber of Commerce ambassadors, spokespersons per se, and those individuals have disabilities because we want them to basically be the ones that lead all of this programming for the chamber. And so, so the plan was, of course, to include them in all the events and all the facets of DCC 2020. It was quite a setback, obviously, not just for us, but for everyone. But uh, we plan on including, uh, well, we have a programmer, uh, I'm sorry, not a programmer, I'm sorry, a person who's helping us with that part of the programming. And uh, she will be leading the ambassadors and helping us. Um, make that program a little bit more inclusive in everything that yes. we do in everything not just events mm -hmm. but uh even even deciding on how to how to proceed with programs different other programs other different we programs. learn every day from people with disabilities including our own children but uh, right these ambassadors really are the inspiration for dcc rgb so we definitely keep inviting them to the conversation they are forming parts of the subcommittees and they're definitely, you know, when we're out and about part of it. We're also, we were very, very blessed to have been gifted in an office at mm -hmm. the beginning of 2020 by a, a private donor. And so we still haven't- Member kind of, of the Alhambra actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we haven't yet fully went into the office, but the next step was we started a process to put out the responsibilities of a potential staffer for DCC RGB, which we hope will also have a disability because we want to continue to not only um, train employers, inspire potential entrepreneurs with disabilities, but we want to hire them as well in our team because we can learn so much from them. So we don't want to ask an employer, hey, would you be willing to hire someone with a disability? Because they're they're amazing, they're qualified, they fit the mold. We also want to do that. So right. DCCRGB is just trying to encompass it all around so that we can hopefully inspire other employers and organizations and private entities and everyone from school districts to restaurants, anyone to hire people with disabilities. And we're always learning and we're learning from the other organizations that we try to partner with. And, but the people who have taught us the most are the people that we, we want to help. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot from my son. I thought I want, I was doing things to help him that he wanted to do. My son is on the spectrum, but when I, asked him, is this something that you want to do? And he's like, no, this is not something I want to do. This is not something that makes me happy. So learning to ask, is it something that will benefit you? Is this something individual? That's where I've started to learn to change my way of thinking and my whole mission actually. Yes. And helping, I was trying, what I thought I was helping, I was hurting. And hindering. And hindering the process. The process. So I think that, uh, helping employers, uh, a business, small business, big business, anybody, I understand that, mm -hmm. that they could just go out and say, is this something, or 
are you okay if I call you autistic person as opposed to a person with autism? Yes. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a personal that. choice. It's a personal thing. choice. So um, that is something that I have, have uh, tried to also change in my own uh, mission, uh, like I said, but also help out in DCCRGV or anybody who comes and be part of our DCCRGV. Learning from our board members has been amazing. Yes. We have amazing and we forgot people. to mention we also have board members that are comprised from the business community as well yes. so <laughs> we have a little bit of everything we're super blessed on this board it's just it's a great team we're learning so much from it and we still have lots of individuals asking how they can participate we are going to be forming other advisory committees and so there will be other opportunities to help our chamber grow uh, the vision is to one day basically have at least 10 to 20 percent of the in, uh, in the business sector hiring people with disabilities and we also want to know we don't we never want it to be the token hire you know right. we want it to be meaningful and we want it to just be the norm we want it to be i came in i interviewed i was not the best fit for this someone else was and or another time i was the best fit they saw me as an individual a human first they didn't see the disability they literally gave me an equal access opportunity to the interview and and i was the fit right. so we also want to just highlight we never want people to do it just because it's the right thing to do it's also if we want to flip-flop this the employment of um, the business sector has no idea what an untapped market of, of a workforce there is in hiring people with disabilities. There's a group of individuals who are being overseen and overshadowed for either the stigmas, for fear, for whatever it is. And um, this is an untapped market. And if you're looking to go into 2021 with uh, very new innovative ideas for hiring for any position they, is something they should consider because they can increase their their productivity, it can increase their climate at their company, mm -hmm. boost morale in a time when we all Brand need recognition. it. Yes, brand recognition. There's a lot of people and customers who shop solely inclusive brands. So if someone yes. says, I'd rather give my money, let's say, to said company because they're showcasing, showcasing people from different, you know, cultural backgrounds, from different abilities. And so we also have to realize as business owners, I'm a business owner, that we can market and brand in a more inclusive business, and that will increase your bottom dollar at the end. And so it's a non-tapped market. And so we also want to inspire the employers who are watching us because um, we have been working hand in hand with other city chambers as well, mm -hmm. local city chambers. Absolutely. And so they have a great deal of members that need something different. And we, you know, we haven't worked with all of them, but we just also want to extend an invitation to, to other chambers that we would love to partner and collaborate with them to help them and their members as well. Exactly. That's amazing. And you know, what comes to mind is when we learn about the disability rights movement, one of the most iconic uh, slogans that came out of that slogans was the nothing about us without us, right? That you, you just mentioned at the beginning of, of this uh, response. And that is uh, so powerful, right? Because that is the key to truly move forward uh, in inclusion and uh, in an effective way, in a systemic way. So um, it, it's great that you're applying all those uh, efforts that have initiated, right? It's been, we just celebrated the, the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act this past year. So we have so much work to do, right? To get closer to a fully inclusive uh, workforce. And like, as you mentioned, it benefits everyone uh, and it's good for the workforce and it's good to moving forward into a better future, right? Stronger um, with better strategies and solutions for everyone. So what, uh, I, you have such a great focus, such an important focus, right? And what, what should people expect coming this year? Are there any events that people can tap into? Well, we are working on a, uh, on a conference and that's along with the Texas Workforce Commission. And um, that is scheduled to take place April 23rd. Um, 
we are working on that. Uh, I think it's going to be a hybrid type conference where we have persons uh, that are uh, present and it will be virtual as well. Yeah, and one of the most uh, cool things about it, because we, you know, who doesn't like a good conference and a good workshop? I mean, I always used to love traveling. That was part of the fun when I was a teacher and later on in life for other things. Conferences are amazing. It's just such a great experience. One thing that we felt we were lacking was a full-blown employer conference. And so this one is going to be dedicated most Importantly, it's called the Disability Employer Conference. It's going to be dedicated to the employers who want to learn more. Employer Awareness Conference. Employer yes. Awareness Conference. And so um, it's meant for HR departments. It's meant for CEOs, for business owners, for uh, managers, for supervisors, mainly those who do the hiring. But of course, at all times, anyone with a disability is welcome to also join um, our events. And so this is a um, wonderful opportunity for the business sector to, to listen and get some great feedback. We started it off with a kickoff. The pre-conference kickoff happened in October. October of 2019. It was online and it was a really amazing event. We had someone from Walgreens H-E-B. and HEB speak to us and was moderated by Texas Workforce, Texas Workforce Commission. And it was a great opportunity to learn. Uh, Walgreens has a really great program in place for hiring people with disabilities. They've learned so much. And so once again, we're not about reinventing the wheel. And so we wanted to hear their perspective. For the Disability Employer Conference, we're going to have anywhere from four to eight presenters and uh, topics, topics. In recruiting. Recruiting hiring, um, retaining, retention, taxes, incentives uh, for right. employers who hire people with disability, if any, liability, if Just any, provide the resources necessary yes. to employers to help them with a potential navigate the dis disability employee realm. Yeah. So it'll be speakers with a potential panel and a wonderful keynote that we're working on still top secret <laughs> but at the end of the day um it's just it's a great opportunity like esmer mentioned it'll be hybrid and so some people will be in person and some people will be um online but uh that's what's coming up in april we also uh, are working on expanding the ambassador program and so if you are a person with a disability and you're interested in um coming to volunteer for the chamber and learn more about how you could become an ambassador, reach out to us. We would love to connect with you. Info at dccrgv.org. Info at dccrgv.org. We would love to learn more from you. We wanna know what you need <laughs> so that we can better address your needs in the community. And um, DCCRGV is also functioning as a liaison. We continue to partner up with uh, different chambers, different state agencies. Um, just because uh, we find it more effective, honestly, to basically reach our mission. That's exciting. Uh, definitely lots of great stuff to look forward to. So I don't see any questions in the or comments in the in the live feed right now, but you mentioned that the best way to contact you would be at through email, right? At info at dcc.org. DCC rgv.org okay perfect and I'll, I'll be having some fundraising events coming up in um the summer and so those fundraising events are open to employers who want to give back in a different way let's say they say i'm not ready to yet go that step i want to learn and i but i want to support your mission right we are having some amazing events coming up for fundraising purposes for the chamber at the end of the day we are a 501c3 and looking for opportunities to connect so if you are a potential sponsor that wants to assist us with this type of programming also please know we are looking for that as well <laughs> thank you well, thank, thank you so much for for allocating some time out of your schedule for this brief interview and we're so excited to continue our partnership and to move forward, right? Leading on inclusion in our in our local community. So thanks so much, so much for all you do and for being here with us today. Thank, thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Renette. Thank you. Thank you.